welcome everyone welcome to our youtube channel and this is yet another special episode of interview with selected candidate and today uh, we have a special guest uh, with us uh, and his name is uh, rishav uh, raj and why he is so special you will get to know uh, about it very soon so rishav uh, is here to share his interview experience with us so he is basically program manager in amazon so he is going to tell us exactly if you wanted to become a program manager in amazon then what all this things you have to do and what all the things you have to prepare for the interview so first of all uh, most welcome to our channel and now it's all up to you uh, so uh, why don't you start with your experience first just because i am as i said that you are so special and you can inspire lots of you know a uh, user out there who is watching uh, currently so um, can you just uh, you know before uh, coming to the amazon can you just uh, give a brief uh, you know about yourself can you just tell little story about yourself how did you come till here amazon uh, okay sure i'll start that mm-hmm. yeah. so basically i graduated in 2014 okay from not a tier one but rather a tier two college in tumkur the college name is sit it's a government institute of technology yeah. i was a strata professor in computer science course there mm-hmm. and then post that i got a campus placement into music now from there mm-hmm. where for two years i worked as a business analyst mm-hmm. and post that i got an opportunity in amazon and it's been 3 years right now i've been working in amazon i wanted to tell uh, to the user that most of the user they have a kind of pre mindset uh, you know uh, that you know if uh, they have to come to the amazon then you know uh, they have to have a from you know tier one college or something like that so i think uh, he is the live example i know in front of you all so can just share about that journey uh, in brief you work in new sigma and from there you directly jump to the company like amazon how was it uh, that happens it is more or like a miracle types <laughs> it's nothing like a miracle to be honest like it's a very big myth what people say that then you need to be from a big firm to be in amazon mm-hmm. uh like i'll tell you about another myth as well people also claim that unless you do mba you can't do management level roles yeah that is another that thing. is not true to be fair to be honest like mm, so the team i was working uh, with last in amazon uh-huh. my director in that team and with the director i'm talking about elite at amazon uh-huh. Uh-huh. he is not a mba grad he passed out from nsit delhi in passed out in 2000 mm-hmm. and we are talking about the age when computers were not that popular in india mm-hmm. he never pursued any further education and right now he is a director at amazon some okay so um, break that myth that's not true <laughs> okay. and it's not just me there are a lot of people actually who are at program manager at high level and are not mba grads or not from a tier one college as well and i have also seen them scale up to leadership level as well yeah it's too early for me to say considering that it's been 6 years for amazon in india mm-hmm. so even if someone would have joined in 2013 mm-hmm. they might not have reached very far from that stage okay but i'm pretty sure in coming in coming 5 years or so you'll have some a uh, better number of people uh-huh. in the leadership mm-hmm. without a tier one college tag or without a mba tag so what exactly you have to do to become a program manager is because you also came from the technical background right mm-hmm. so obviously in the office you will be doing all this uh, you know architect role stuff and also how was that ladder can you just tell me before what it like to become a program manager you have to start with a software engineer then become a tech lead or something like that or you can jump directly also uh, so basically i got a boost from mu sigma to be honest So when I passed out from the college, my technical education or technical work kind of ended up there. Mm-hmm. There were things from college what I'm still using till date, okay. but not to an extent what a SD or software developer will do. Okay. So Musicma mm-hmm. taught me how to do analytics. Two years was a good journey there. And the program manager role in Amazon is more specific to that only. And we are a data driven company to be honest. Yeah. Okay. So if you <laughs> are someone who can dig deep into the data and get out insights what people can't do there is nothing stopping you from becoming a program manager irrespective of where you come from uh, yeah so um now uh, we will uh, come to the uh, your interview experience part so can you just tell us like uh, how did you apply for this post mm-hmm. and what was the initial discussion with the hr or whatever the things uh, you had uh, you know experience with hr you can just uh, share that first So basically, it started in 2016. Uh-huh. Okay, I was applying for jobs. Okay. Amazon was in one of my wish list, but I hadn't applied for it so until uh, that far. Uh-huh. Uh huh. So I got an invite from LinkedIn. Hmm. Uh-huh. And yeah, uh, LinkedIn is one thing what should be updated. I suggest to everyone. Okay. This is a very important point. Everyone should be noted. <laughs> so I got an invite. It was from an HR in Amazon. Okay. So first, I was skeptical, like whether it's a genuine invite or not. But then I checked the profile, found that yeah. This person is a HR at Amazon. Okay. <laughs> so I accepted the invite, and over the chat, 
So I'll tell you the story. Like let's yeah. let's describe it like a story. So yeah, yeah. Please. It's Wednesday afternoon, please. I'm sitting in office. I <laughs> get a LinkedIn invite. I check the profile. I connect to the person. I just uh, uh, revert with a yes, interested in the job role. Mm-hmm. So the HR asks me for my resume. Mm-hmm. I share my resume. Mm-hmm. And by tomorrow, by Thursday morning, mm-hmm. she reverts that yeah, your resume is fit for the role. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, we'll conduct. A couple of online tests for you. Mm-hmm. Post which, mm-hmm. if you clear that, we can schedule face-to-face interviews. Mm-hmm. So Thursday evening, I get an online test which had quants round, okay, which had Excel round, mm-hmm. and there was a manual eyeball test round. Mm-hmm. This is like spot the differences between the two of these kind of stuffs. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So Thursday evening, I do that. I submit it on Thursday evening itself. Mm-hmm. I was given only one only one day timeline. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I do it on Thursday evening. So Friday afternoon, huh? I got a confirmation that yeah, if that was uh, good for from your end. Okay. So tomorrow you have face to face interviews. <laughs> <laughs> I was like really. <laughs> so, so you could have asked for some time as well, right, for the preparation. Uh, normally, I have seen people like uh, if they will call for the face to face round, they'll uh, normally ask like, okay, give me one week time for the preparation, just because this is a golden opportunity. No one, they no wanted to miss. If you're not in a tech role now, yeah, you don't, you can't do anything with the time given to you for preparation. Okay. Because my questions are not to uh, find the output of this code segment or mm-hmm. how will you develop the algorithm to do that. Yes, yes, yes. My questions are totally based on what have I have I done in the past, what have I learned out of that, what's my conclusion, and how mm-hmm. I can use it in the future, like whether it fits the company's role or not. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, um, I actually I was. Then I came back from office at like something around seven or so. Mm-hmm. I started googling about it and found like mm-hmm. Amazon has fourteen leadership principles on which this try one. Okay. And even the HR had sent me that snapshot. Yeah. So they, they send it to every candidate. Yeah. The okay. HR of Amazon, uh, they are very nice. They'll give you all the links <laughs> for the preparation. It's not that again you have to go and uh, you know Google it. They'll send everything. And okay. uh, honestly, going through books or something doesn't help. I had, uh-huh. I had actually also seen a video at that time, some of the interviews mm-hmm. uh, at Amazon, and everyone told the same thing in the video. Like mm-hmm. uh, the LPs are the important ones. Mm-hmm. Every question will be based on that. Mm-hmm. And so I prepared myself till like ten. Mm-hmm. I slept early because I had to travel long distance to come to Amazon office yeah. the next day. So, like, oh, uh, you were not there in this uh, the city. Uh, I was in the city, but okay. if, if you want to consider Whitefield as <laughs> uh, the same city, then yes, I was in the city. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> okay. So it was like a one and a half, two hours ride for me early morning, and that week started like it was supposed to start here at nine thirty. So I left there like at seven seven thirty mm-hmm. in the morning. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I come in and I'm given a written test mm-hmm. which has some five to seven SQL questions. Okay. Uh, being a BA, I didn't find those questions really tough. Uh, so that was just kind of a preliminary test key whether you know how to handle data or not. Okay. And anyone who has even a year or a year and a half experience of BA mm-hmm. won't commit even a single mistake in those questions. But if you don't know, you will definitely not be able to do. Okay. So that was done. Mm-hmm. And now from around 10.30 in the morning to 5.30 in the evening, I had five face-to-face terms. Oh, wow. so, okay. <laughs> And I had no idea what was going on. So likewise, it, it was uh, so it was given to me mm-hmm. that, and even I heard from people the same myth. Actually, what I'm talking about that mm-hmm. program managers are mostly MBA grads in Amazon. Yeah. So I personally came in for uh, Amazon interview experience. So mm-hmm. whenever uh, I'll get a chance in the future, I might be able to use it. <laughs> but then I walk in into one of the interviews. Okay. And it felt good. Okay. Uh-huh. Like whatever they asked me. Uh-huh. I could build the answers rather okay. like uh, what they wanted to hear. So it's given like they throw me a situation mm-hmm. and I think about how you will deal with those things in daily life mm-hmm. and I was able to solve that. Uh, so was it more of a, like a business oriented uh, questions or it was like a normal uh, uh, behavior situation kind of questions like if you have certain kind of situation then how you're going to handle such, something like that? Like, so there are two kinds, kinds of questions. Okay. One what you have done, mm-hmm. one what you will do. So like if I'm interviewing today at Amazon, mm-hmm. I definitely want the person in front of me to answer a situation what I have handled in the past. Okay. Yeah, and I basically what the what I want that person to handle. So I won't be throwing it like a direct scenario mm-hmm. because 
I would have had like six months or one year experience into the team before I was solving that. Mm-hmm. So I'll let the person feel free to his assumptions. And that that was the same kind of thing what was done to me. Okay. To be honest, the interviews made me comfortable. Uh-huh. I was allowed to have my assumptions. I was free to ask questions. Uh-huh. Okay, there were a lot of things about Amazon I knew on the interview day. To be honest, so all the interviews are on the basis of your leadership principles. Okay, all the interviews are given a set of like two, three, or four LPs to test the candidate on, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and they. can ask questions according to that like however they feel say i will give you an example deliver results one of the very simple uh, amazon leadership principles like if a candidate is able to deliver result on time or not okay so i'll ask, start with a question asking that to tell me about a time when there was something which was about to miss a deadline mm-hmm. and you were able to finish your deadline okay just a very simple question like <coughs> just coming to the back of your mind okay now on the basis of the answer given by the candidate and then i'll ask the next next set of questions and then i'll fit the candidate into the role what i am into and then move from what you did to what you can do so uh, coming back to my own point again mm. preparations won't help if you have worked if you have things whatever is written in your resume is general mm-hmm. i'm pretty sure you'll be able to answer all the questions and even if not you'll be able to take an approach on those but if there is something which you haven't done which you like say apart for one week or so or you won't have a complete idea on that mm-hmm. then once we go deep into the question you might get a bit trouble like you won't be able to answer uh, like and that's a definitive thing that happens in almost all the interviews I don't want to comment on anyone but yeah i have also seen few resumes which had a lot of things written but but they can't make it turn out to be that good like you can catch it out of the way they are explaining what they have done. so here you are uh, saying indirectly to the user that okay whatever things you know the same thing you have to mention in okay. your resume right just because at the end uh, they are going to ask you question from the resume itself we don't expect you to be great in everything because no one is no one is yeah it is but true. we <laughs> do expect you to like whatever you have done uh-huh. you have given your time and efforts in that you have obtain results from that mm-hmm. and that is the thing you are carrying with us with us because even if someone gets selected with a fake resume mm-hmm. i don't think it's an easier thing to survive post that in any company in india or in, in yeah, any anywhere oh, yeah. so this uh, you are talking about the first round experience right uh, and all the five rounds were mostly okay. around that same theme mm-hmm. with LPs divided amongst the interviews. Okay. In fact, speaking, I don't know which LP was given to whom. And there is always a bar raiser as well, mm-hmm. who has an experience of more than fifty, sixty interviews. Mm-hmm. So this faking thing will definitely not work in front of a bar raiser. Mm-hmm. You might be able to get past against some of the new interviews, but a bar raiser will definitely catch you. So can you please elaborate about this uh, bar raiser and what exactly happened? Why they will conduct a bar bar raiser? So as the mean? name suggests, a bar raiser is someone who keeps the bar of the interview high. Okay. Yeah. He has an experience in conducting interviews. He's usually a, a person from the leadership team of Amazon. Mm-hmm. So he or she rather like. Uh, so basically, the need for it is there, and I personally feel that that's a good thing mm-hmm. because um, not every interview comes in with a handful of experience. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. like and thus it's very needed that there is and because you don't conduct interviews with everyone like every uh, entire panel sitting on one side and the candidate on the other side mm-hmm. what i might have conducted the interview okay i might have skipped something mm-hmm. what the barrier is might not do okay so that's why there is a need for the bar is it mm-hmm. and the process has been in amazon for quite some time in bar rounds around then the difficulty levels of the question will be much higher than uh, the usual interview round it's up to his or her choice how he, how they want to conduct it uh-huh. okay uh-huh. it also depends on what the hiring manager expects the bar raiser to do okay so two persons for sure will be there in any interview one mm-hmm. will be the hiring manager one will be the bar raiser okay you might or might not know who the that person is okay like i still don't know who my bar raiser was no okay. like even after being 3 years <laughs> my my previous manager who hired me she doesn't remember who my bar raiser was <laughs> And I have no other way to get that information, okay. and that's actually kept secret. Okay, okay. yes. Yeah. So uh, those rounds for sure you'll have, and okay. then people usually have four to five rounds or six rounds as well if needed. Mm-hmm. But yeah, as I said, mostly the LPs are divided amongst people, and it usually ends in like five rounds. Mm-hmm. Sixth one can be there if there is a conflict. So for uh, each and every round, uh, the topic will be the same as you said that. So for example, for, you know, if any uh, candidates coming for the technical round, right? Uh, so it is uh, pretty much clear to all of us that uh, obviously they will be asking some question from the DS 
right? Data search is mm-hmm. pretty much clear to everyone. Mm-hmm. System design is pretty much to, uh, know, okay. to everyone. So, mm-hmm. so something like that. Do you have any specific field as well? Ki, yeah, definitely they are going to touch into this this uh, topics. So, your thinking cap- capability, your mm, visioning capability is one thing we'll definitely like to can- check the candidate on. Mm-hmm. And we will throw in, try to throw in some situations mm-hmm. where probably the candidate might not be comfortable or have has or have uh, have not done it in the past. Okay. But we will give the candidate ample time to think and tell me what will be your plan of execution. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That is one area where a program manager interview differs a lot from a SD interview. Okay. SD interviews me if I'm conducting a SD interview, I'll definitely ask things on data structure. Yeah. But there is no such book for program management where I can ask a question from. Yeah, I know I'm not talking about the specific, but the field at least like I know uh, we we have to test on the business side. So they will give us some kind of scenario. It's like, it's scenario based thing. So, so business I question that is called about business. guesstimates. If you are talking about or uh-huh. um, yeah, these are common things guesstimates and all people do will ask in Amazon. Mm-hmm. But it's a personal choice of the interviewer, and there is no compulsion. Okay, and uh, will they go into uh, any of uh, Amazon product uh, as well? Like, uh, uh, will they give you some kind of scenario? Like, you know, we have this product, and we have this, this kind of scenario. How are you going to handle something like that? So I was actually given one. Okay. About that, and we prefer like the team in which you are hiring the candidate. Mm-hmm. But whatever the, whatever work is about to come in that, mm-hmm. you at least ask few things about that. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't expect the candidate to know everything, mm-hmm. but I expect him or her to think. And tell me, like, if this is what the situation is, mm-hmm. how will you approach? Then what happened? So, so you said that okay, the interview was started from ten. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think ten to five. Uh, I think it almost started from eleven to be specific. Okay. Eleven to five, we were given lunch in between, and I had some ten fifteen minutes break between each of the rounds to refresh myself. Okay. Till the next interview, prepares okay. himself or herself. So it was going like a smooth process. The only Thing was that till the time I came to the last interview, uh-huh. uh, not all people will face that. Mm-hmm. But since I was, I had written from all the way long from Whitefield to here, okay, <laughs> so I was a little bit more exhausted. Uh-huh. But then the interviewer was kind enough, and she wrapped it up in thirty minutes. Like I was happy that Amazon cares. Okay, nice. So, uh, so you had uh, this all this uh, round of interviews uh, uh, because of you know you were clearing uh, the round uh, one by one, right? Right. Or um, just because in you know, in the some companies I have heard that or I have uh, seen that as well yeah. that they'll take your all interviews all together and at the end then they'll uh, you know uh, check like whether you know they can call you for the next uh, interview round or not. So how was it? Uh, basically, what happens is that mm-hmm. we always prefer conducting more than one round for any, for any candidate mm-hmm. before before judging whether the candidate is fit for the role yeah. or not. Yeah. So obviously for an interview you'll have an answer yes, no or maybe. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. If it's in a maybe stage, mm-hmm. okay, we will still move with the second round second or third round, round at least okay. Okay. to finally check like whether if it ends in all maybe or no and we might increase the bar at that, at that point. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. But uh, it might differ from people to people. If say like the first interview is a hiring manager mm-hmm. okay. and the hiring manager says a clear cut no. Because that person knows the business way, way, way better than the other interviewers does, and the other interviews do. So in that case, uh, they might have another round mm-hmm. just to check whether that no other person is also aligned to a no or what, and then it might end. Else, uh, it usually goes on till three rounds at least. Again, after third round, actually, I started seeing the churn. Like after every interview, I worked out I could see less and less number of people in the room. <laughs> Before the last interview, the only person sitting was my friend who had come with me, and I was right back home. Oh, okay. So everyone had gone by then. Okay. okay. Yeah. Huh. But until third, fourth round, there still were quite a lot of number, a lot, a lot of people. Okay. It's like you can't judge a book by its cover. The same fundamentals yeah, yeah. like that. So ultimately, at the end, every uh, interview should be on the same page, right? It, it is not like five. Are saying that okay, hire and one uh, interview saying that no, okay, no, no don't hire. That is call is not taken during the interview. Okay. To be honest, okay, that call is. Yeah, I'm talking about the background scene. <laughs> background scene, yeah, um, back uh, back in the day, I'm taking, uh, telling you. So uh-huh. interviewers have to input their feedback uh-huh. without having a bias. Okay. So you can't see what other interviews have given the feedback in unless you enter your own feedback. 
so that keeps the system clean mm-hmm. and it avoids having a biased mind because even if you don't want to once you see a result you might have a tendency to be aligned to what the other person has done yeah so it's a fair call to be honest mm-hmm. and then once say like if it's aligned from more than uh, like the hiring manager says aligned the bar manager the bar manager says aligned mm-hmm. few other interviews says aligned then there's a uh, call call which happens where mm-hmm. all the interviews the hr and everyone sits on the call mm-hmm. and the final decision is taken whether the candidate should be something or not okay So you had done with the six or uh, five interview then five, uh, five to six not and then after that they have released uh, that I just told you immediately about the result how was it so I was told that I'll have a, a phone call round from mm-hmm. a senior manager mm-hmm. which I was expecting in few days mm-hmm. but I think that didn't happen and in another two weeks or so I got a call from Amazon saying that uh, your uh, so your selection is done mm-hmm. okay we'll be releasing the offer letter. Mm-hmm. and then the process took another week or so mm-hmm. for releasing the offer letter and post that i had a one month notice period there which i served mm, i had an option to buy that notice period but uh, since i was uh, like there were a lot of new members in my team and prefer not to do so can you just please explain about the buy, buy option to our user like what does it mean so uh, you might depending on the team's need like if i'm hiring for a requirement which is 2 months or 3 months into the future mm. i might not choose to buy the notice period option and it's up to a candidate's choice whether they want to go ahead with that or not yeah. it's not a compulsion but we do give option to some of the candidates that we can buy your notice period but, but i think in that case uh, that uh, the company will uh, pay you right or uh, something like Amazon that will reimburse you reimburse you right like whatever the amount that you're going to give to your current company the same amount you will get from your next uh, company but yeah that's uh, it's up to the candidate's choice the decision is never enforced on the candidate if the candidate wants to if the candidate opts for and if there is an option okay we give that option to the candidate which one is a better option according to you i mean to say uh, joining immediately is a good thing or uh, it, you can it's a subjective and- call i'm leading i was leading a team there and okay. i had like other than uh, so technically my team had seen a very big churn in the past 3 years mm-hmm. and the after me the oldest member in the team was 214 mm-hmm. and the okay. manager was also definitely not aligned for the same reason that you leave in a short period of time and oh, i, so I also wanted to finish things up on a good note obviously yeah, 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 that is so i never cho- never chose that option okay. but if there is someone who's uh, say serving a notice period or say that doesn't have any specific uh, work in the company dependencies maybe as someone mm-hmm. sitting on bench or something like that in that case you might not need to serve the, the notice period in that case you can join immediately And uh, how about HR round? So uh, that uh, uh, didn't happen with you. <laughs> like we don't have HR rounds. Nice. So how about the sell sell negotiation part? Where is that? We have in that. Uh, I had it on call actually. Okay. So uh, the software that was released, I discussed with the HR, and then the HR went back to the hiring manager, and this was discussed, and then we closed it. I won't disclose what happened. No, no, uh, that's completely. Yeah. Uh, we can understand that. Uh, let's use the image. Let's use all the <laughs> <use> image. <imagine. laughs> right. So HR doesn't happen for the uh, manager uh, kind of post in Amazon. Uh, like uh, oh, they will not ask you question like okay why Amazon and why you are leaving. No, no, no. We we normal tech HR questions. So uh, um, that hiring manager himself or herself at times might ask that. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we haven't had that kind of a challenge as in a lot of companies ki okay what are your expectations what how do you see yourself in 5 years mm. it's up to the interviewer the interviewer only ask these kind of questions if needed okay. mostly the hiring manager like if i am a hiring manager i would want to know what the candidate is thinking about for doing in the next 3 years okay. so that if the role fits if the role doesn't fit like if i feel that i might not be doing justice to the candidate i would rather want to let him go and try for some better opportunities than hire another role okay Okay. Okay. Yeah, and so uh, one last thing, uh, Rishabh. Uh, so from your side, uh, give some gyan to our user, especially candidate who actually wanted to become a program manager. So, kuch asa kuch uh, tips, uh, any reference, like in terms of sites, any blogs, padho kahi se kuch bhi, anything. Dil laga ke kam karo. Dil laga ke kam hi karo. Kam karo, pray kam karo. Have smart thinking. Yeah. ठीक है. You don't need to like hog in ten hours or twenty or twelve hours a day to for that thing. Mm-hmm. If you can think what others can't think in ten hours, mm-hmm. you are the perfect one for it. And uh, we go by the funda like Amazon. What we do here is that we work hard, we have fun, we make history. That's the Amazon. Wow, a slogan. <laughs> <laughs> That's, the slogan. <laughs> That's really awesome. 
So yeah, I think uh, so. That's all. Uh, or you have anything to share more? Uh, nothing specific. Just one thing came to my mind. Yeah. So every interview process comes with a thought. Mm-hmm. Like we are hiring someone mm-hmm. who's better than fifty percent of the existing population. Yeah. So the bar will never decrease. The bar will keep on getting high. So always keep that in mind. Yeah. yeah. So uh, first uh, believe in yourself, and then believe in your knowledge as well. <laughs> right. Yeah. And don't worry, we will never make anything. Uh, we'll never do anything in interview to make you uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. And if you ever feel like you are getting nervous, getting uncomfortable, need a break, feel free to ask that. We are more than happy to interview a candidate in good health. Take it rather than a nervous candidate who might have been a good opportunity, but we just missed because the candidate was nervous. So feel free to ask that. Nice, okay, so uh, Arisha, uh, one last thing: uh, can you please help to our uh, users, right? If uh, anyone's wanted to contact you, you know, if they wanted to ask some kind of questions related to the interview, hmm. right? So what we can do is like we are gonna mention your LinkedIn profile in our uh, discussion of this video. Okay. So is it fine with you, right? Yeah, that works. <laughs> uh, like, uh, so I'm happy to share that <laughs> over LinkedIn, but as long as it stays on LinkedIn. So, yeah, yeah, that'll be a good thing. I actually keep on getting some of the requests from unknown people or my old college friends as well. Yeah, so, yeah. so everyone, you are free enough to contact Arisha Bindas. I even expect that maybe after a month, he will reply. Yeah, yeah, please. He can take time. Yes, of course. Uh, he is a program manager after all in Amazon. So please keep that thing in mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there's a one last thing. Uh, so this is kind of request from our side. Uh, can you just please uh, tell your experience, uh, you know, with us about the channel if you want to say uh, anything to the users? So uh, I think you're doing a great job in that aspect. To be honest, uh, this is one of the uh, one of the things I always prefer before an interview, like getting an, uh, getting experience from someone who has already done it before. Yeah. Because you never know what's gonna be thrown at you once you enter that interview room. You might be prepared for a lot of things, but uh, suddenly you come in. And you get it uh, totally out of the subject. You get nervous or something like that. Mm. So it's a great thing what you're doing. Okay. Um, nice. I have been benefited by that in the past. Yeah. I like right since my college days. So mm. even when I was studying for my music, my interview, I actually all I had done was watch three videos okay. and went to the interview. And that was a great experience <laughs> for me. I still remember three videos. And I have been suggested. I love just because like, you are pretty much specific about that con. No, no, because I have been, I have referred this to like almost. Thirty to forty more people who asked me like how to prepare for music, and I was like, "Yeah, key, go to YouTube, search for the channel, mm. and these are the three videos mm. you can watch." And I got all my answers out of that. You can get it too. So great work in doing that. Thanks for interviewing me. To be honest, oh, thanks a lot. So that that means indirectly you are saying to the user that they have to subscribe, like, share. Yeah, yeah all those things. Like, like, subscribe, click the bell share button, everything. Share, share whatever, whatever you want to do. <laughs> okay, you, have to, you can do that. <laughs> Okay so thanks uh, thanks is uh, thanks for your time okay bye 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 bye